can I help you, dear? Who are you? This is Phelps General Store, so who would that make me? Maybe you need to go back to Gein Memorial and have Miss Whaley teach you about logic. I'm fuzzy on a lot of things these days. My memory's gone. Shaw, you always were a kidder, Steve. I'm serious, I need some help. Well, they say a sharp blow to the head is a good thing for amnesia. In which case, I'd recommend Miss Whaley again. Then again, they say a good scare can jog the memory. In which case, I'd advise you to visit the sergeant at arms over at the lodge. That man gives me the willies. Speaking of willies, how's your father? Don't know. Haven't seen him. Care to buy anything today? Just point to whatever you want. I'm a little hard of hearing. Damn it. Well, that didn't work. Okay. A girly magazine? Why, Steve, I'm surprised at you. I'd expect that sort of thing from Deputy Loomis, but never from you. He's always coming in here oogling the girly magazines behind my counter. Darned if I'd sell him one, though. I know his wife, for heaven's sakes. Well, will you sell me one? I certainly will, Steve. That kind of interest is healthy for a young fellow. Stares him away from being a fireman. Damn it. Well, that didn't work. There he is, my future son-in-law. And how's he doing today? What brings him to the Potsdam household, huh? Huh? <laughs> what a card. Would I kid about something like that? Why won't you believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Your mother just telephoned us about your latest shenanigans. Isn't that right, Mrs. Potsdam? Sure did, Mr. Potsdam. You little rascal. Imagination's a swell thing to have, in small amounts. Man needs to keep his feet on the ground, especially if he's getting married. <laughs> Tell me, is your father feeling better? Is he going back to the slaughterhouse anytime soon? Tell me about this wedding. Well, it looks like we're going to have to hold the wedding down at the funeral parlor, since I'm not a member of the lodge. <laughs> Mr. Moynihan has given his okay, and your father is going to cater the affair <laughs> with plenty of meat. Why are you so anxious to get into the lodge? There's wonders inside. I've heard there's more meat in there than they know what to do with. Now that you're of age, Steve, you might go down to the post office and fill out a lodge application. They're always looking for new blood. Well, don't look at me. Mrs. Potsdam wants Stephanie to study hard for her finals. If it was up to me, you could go straight upstairs, but you know, <laughs> the little woman, 
You'll have to ask her permission to see Stephanie. Sorry, Steve. The last thing I want to do is upset you and your father before the wedding. Not with the meat at stake. You will remind your dad about the meat. Won't you? I haven't seen my father. He's locked in a room. He's not going to die, is he? Like I said, I don't know. That woman, Mom, tends to him herself. Well, next time you see him, be sure to tell him that I said hello. And tell him that I'm praying for his speedy recovery. And also, would you remind him about the meat? Especially about the meat. Yeah, fine. If I see him. You should be more concerned. If he dies, then who's going to take over the slaughterhouse? Who's going to tend to the meat? I guess as his son, you'd take over. Right? I can't imagine a better job than working in a slaughterhouse. Sure, it'd be just dandy. And you can't argue with success. Everyone in Harvest gets their meat from your dad. What a grand business to go into. Oh, sure. Cutting animals open may not be much fun. Reaching into their bodies and yanking out the bloody guts, intestines dangling and slapping against you, the smell of death and shit in your nostrils all the time. Well, those are all definite cons. But once you're done, the guts have been washed into the gutters. What are you left with? Meat. Rows and rows of scrumptious red meat. Meat is the foundation of any decent society. Everyone needs at least three servings of red meat a day. And anyone who says otherwise is a commie. And once you're married to Stephanie, I'll be part of the family too. And your father will give me all the meat I want. <sighs> Kinda makes up for not getting into the lodge. Why are you so anxious to get into the lodge? There's wonders inside. I've heard there's more meat in there than they know what to do with. Now that you're of age, Steve... Mrs. Potsdam grounded Stephanie. So... You'd better go ask her permission before you go upstairs. Sorry, Steve. The last thing I want to do is upset you. Hello, Steve. Have you flossed today? Well, Stephanie is grounded, Steve. Why? I'm sure I don't know. Mr. Poston has sent her to a room, and in her room she'll stay until Mr. Poston says otherwise. Probably until the wedding. Tell me about this wedding. Well, it's set for three weeks. We're holding it over at Shady Oaks, Mr. Moynihan's funeral parlor. Say what? Now, I know it's not a very romantic place, but there's nowhere else to hold it. Thanks to Mr. Poston. Mr. Moynihan runs the Wayward Hotel and the Shady Oaks Funeral Parlor. It's rumored he has connections with the Lodge, but the Order keeps that kind of thing secret. So Mr. Poston has tried to get him to put in a good word for his Lodge application, but so far... What can you tell me about the Lodge? Just that they're exclusive and secretive. If you're curious, you ought to pick up a lodge application at the post office and take it over to the sergeant-at-arms. Isn't that a thought? Forget Mr. Potsdam. If you became a member of the order, we could hold the wedding inside the lodge. My, wouldn't that be lovely? You mustn't be too hard on Mr. Potsdam, Steve. He's a disappointed man. No matter how many lodge admission forms he fills out, they keep turning him down. He has a new application in, though, so keep your fingers crossed. If he joins the lodge, 
you and Stephanie can have your wedding in the Chapel of Love rather than over at Moynihan's place. Tell me about this wedding. Well, it's set for... Say what? Now I know... You mustn't be too... Mr. Moynihan runs the Wayward Hotel and the Shady Oaks Funeral Parlor. It's rumored he has connections with the Lodge. But the Order keeps that kind of thing secret. So Mr. Poston has tried to get him to put in a good word. Give my regards to your parents. Sorry, you'll have to ask Mrs. Potsdam for... Hello, dear. Come to see Stephanie, have you? She's upstairs. Go right on up. Just remember, she's grounded until the wedding. Give my regards to your parents. Who are you? What are you doing in my room? Haven't you heard? We're getting married. So, you're the one. Steve, isn't it? You mean... you don't know me? I mean I don't know anyone! I don't remember anything! How many times do I have to say it? Just one, Stephanie, because... I can't remember a damn thing either. Really? Oh God, I thought it was just me. You're not alone. Can you tell me what's going on here? Those people downstairs have locked me in my room. They say I'm grounded until the wedding. They claim to be my parents. I can't dispute it because I can't remember for sure one way or the other, but it doesn't feel right. I believe you. Maybe some of these people believe you too. Maybe they're playing dumb. Why? Maybe they're responsible. Either way, something really weird is going on here. I've got to escape, and so do you. Because in a way, whether you know it or not, I think we're both grounded. It's been hell. They treat me well, but they won't let me leave this room. Not even to go out in the yard. Not until the wedding. They won't tell you why? Each one blames the other for grounding me. They make up different excuses. Different things I did. None of which I remember. So I sit up here. Watch the world outside my window. And listen to the noises in the house. Every morning a weird boy comes to the house and picks up the paper. He doesn't deliver the paper. He picks up scrap paper that Miss Potsdam sets out on the porch for him. Some morning she forgets, 
and the boy gets furious. He gives me the creeps. Anything else you can tell me? I hear these weird... scraping sounds in the bathroom sometimes. Like something is sliding along the wall. Claws, maybe. And Mr. Potsdam. I don't like the way my dear daddy looks at me. Both of them are always watching me. But especially him. You don't think they're dangerous, do you? I think this whole place is dangerous. I think we've got to escape. Before it's too late. Escape? Harvest is a prison, Steve. Don't forget that. Of course I'm right. Everything in Harvest seems to revolve around this damned lodge. This order of the Harvest Moon. They're responsible for this insane bake sale that's coming, and for the Harvest Blood Drive, too. When people talk about the lodge, it's always in this hushed, reverent tone. Mom keeps telling me that women can't join, but she keeps pressuring me to get you to join. She's not the only one who wants me to sign on with the lodge. That's probably the worst thing you could do. You think the lodge is some kind of trap? I think all of Harvest is a trap. If that's true, maybe joining the lodge is the way out. Look, why not explore the town a little? I can't get out of here, but if I could, that's what I'd do. Maybe you can figure out what's happening here without going anywhere near the lodge. You're really afraid of the lodge, aren't you? I look at that building. All lit up at night, and I get scared. I mean, look at the damn thing! Seem like a harmless bunch of masons to you? Maybe my amnesia isn't total after all. You're familiar to me. Like we've met before. In another life. Maybe we really do live here. Maybe we were together, and the same thing happened to both of us. An accident. Something. Neither of us has bumps on our heads, if that's what you're getting at. Have you been able to remember anything else? Anything at all? Well, I have had these recurring dreams. Just fragments, really. Strange, abstract images. Liquid, chrome... Probably just a dream. Well, have you thought about how to escape Harvest? The wedding is only three weeks away. Not much time to get to know each other, is it? Thanks. But I wouldn't marry anyone with things... you know, as they are. Yeah, well, they can't force us to go through with it. If it comes down to it, we just won't take the vows. I don't think anything in Harvest is that simple. Too many people are determined that we get hitched. Why? Potsdam wants the meat your father promised him. Your parents want to force you to settle down. Mrs. Potsdam wants to have the wedding in the lodge. Me? I just want to escape. Come back and visit me soon, okay? Are you making some kind of point? It's not often that I get visitors. Are you... the Wasp Woman? I am Tetsuo Crumb. The ignorant of Harvest called me the Wasp Woman. A pejorative, no doubt. Born of fear and a poverty of imagination. I don't understand. 
the politics of honey, the Judeo-Christian rites of sacrifice and conventional taboos against unbridled pleasure are all responsible for the prejudice against wasps. The politics of honey are intertwined with the age-old struggle of the aesthetic versus the commercial. Because I choose to raise wasps instead of bees, I'm frowned upon by the community. Why? Well, raising bees is acceptable because they produce honey. But sometimes it's not what is produced. So much as what is performed. I don't see any particular use for wasps. Why must everything have a use? Is money always the determining factor? More slender, more aerodynamic than the bee. The wasp is a joy to behold. Beautiful and juicy. Isn't that enough to compensate for the little drawbacks? Regard the wasp. Wasps produce nothing for others but only for themselves. Wasps build nests and more wasps, nothing more. They spread into eaves and attics, not to make honey for supermarkets, but to buzz and rustle on their own paper, perpetuating their own agenda, growing stealthily, surely. The most relentless of insects. Innocent children, what better way to describe the wasp? Carefree, wild, beautiful things. If they wish to share their love with babies, or any of the rest of you ignorant hicks, that is not my concern. Well, as you can see, the little darlings do love to sting. Another source of prejudice for the masses, and another reason to love them. Bees are like animals. They sting only for a reason, for sacrifice. They have no conception of individual sensation, of pleasure. When a bee stings, it rips itself apart and dies for its audacity. This appeals to those raised worshipping a god that demands sacrifice and atonement. But the wasp is promiscuous. They are not as sympathetic to the masses because they don't die when they sting. They live to sting another day and they take pleasure from it. Yes, a great deal of pleasure. The wasp is a sensual being, not a laborer, hedonistic instead of industrial. Some think them quick to anger. In truth, they are easily swayed to ecstasy. They penetrate your flesh, and the muscular contractions in their thorax as they pump venom could be likened to the muscular contractions of ejaculation. Each painful welt, an act of love. Yes, a great deal. Each pain.
Stephen. Who are you? I am Daniel Moynihan, mortician and proprietor of the Wayward Hotel. Most people ask me why I don't remember their names. Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Besides, as one who deals with the dead, I try not to involve myself in the affairs of the living. Your loss of memory is of no concern to me, true or false. Ironic, considering my recent involvement in a charity event. What are you talking about? My complaints were central to the scheduling of the upcoming Harvest Bake Sale. I am gratified the Order of the Harvest Moon got involved. The proceeds will certainly help cover my losses. This bake sale is a joint effort of the Harvest PTA and the Order of the Harvest Moon. The proceeds will be used to set up a fund for transients. In other words, bums and societal rejects without families who wander into harvest uninvited. Then the Order is setting up shelters for the homeless? Not shelters. Graves. You see, a great number of these hobos die while passing through. Don't ask me why, it's what those people do. Use your common sense, Stephen, memory or no. If they were involved in setting up homeless shelters, then why would I be involved? And why would I be sustaining losses? As always, the Order of the Harvest Moon has taken the lead in addressing our societal ills. Through their sponsorship of the Blood Drive and the Bake Sale, the Lodge ensures that all our needs are met. Needs? Such as... Pardon me, there are corpses to prepare. And my losses have been substantial of late. If you're sincerely interested in the Order, however, you should stop by the Lodge and speak with the Sergeant at Arms. Why should I be interested, Mr. Moynihan? Of all the spots in Harvest, the Lodge is the most prominent, literally and figuratively. It is the ambition of everyone here to join. And join you must to attain wisdom. What kind of wisdom? If I knew, I'd be a member. I have the feeling you have what it takes to join the Order, Stephen. We all believe that. Whether or not you live up to your potential is up to you. This bake sale is a joint effort of the Harvest PTA and the Order of the Harvest Moon. The proceeds will be used to set up a fund for transients. In other words, bums and societal rejects without families who wander into harvest uninvited. Then the order is... Not shelter. It seems that, like some elephant's graveyard, people of low station come to harvest to die. They simply drop dead, penniless, and they all need burials. God knows, by putting these people up at the Wayward Hotel, I do more than my fair share. So why must I pay for the coffins and burial materials as well? My losses to the dead are substantial. Hopefully the bake sale will offset some of them. As owner of the only hotel in town, I do my best to accommodate any hobo who straggles into town, vacancies permitting. I really don't recall. We get so many low-life dregs passing through here, I can't remember every little death that occurs. Huh. Are there that many? As I said, sliced open on a mortician's slab, every corpse looks the same. Red. And juicy. But surely you'd remember if these deaths were an unusual occurrence. You sound like you're launching some sort of investigation, Stephen. That would be most unwise. It seems that, like some God knows, by putting these... Yes, I prepare them. I use this astro glue to close my autopsy incision rather than sutures. It's much faster, more efficient. Of course, it only holds for a short while, but once they're in the ground, who cares if they split open? They will anyway. The pressure of the gases and the worms pressing outward rupturing the cavity open. So why bother with fancy needlework? A cold-blooded approach. But what of my losses? Do you realize if it weren't for the efforts of the Order of the Harvest Moon, the bake sale and so forth, 
Even with the Wayward Hotel, I'd be hard-pressed to stay in business. I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. Please excuse the mess. They've done wonders with the upstairs bedroom, but this garage defies color coordination. Don't bother me, I'm sketching. Oh, look what you made me do! Hello, Steve! Welcome to the House of Flame, as we like to call it. Oh, cut it out, Spots, honestly. Once he gets barking, a good piece of meat is the only way to shut him up. There you go, Spot. So, Steve, bet you don't remember me. Heard about that short and the old wiring. I'm Fire Marshal Sparky, head of your fire department. Please, it's not the subject, it's the process. Don't be such a party pooper, Steve. We're talking about our Besides, we haven't had a fire in harvest since the newspaper building burned down. Though I'll admit that the Wasp Woman's place is one big accident waiting to happen. Isn't that right, Spots? Art enriches the community, Steve. No less than a pulsing fire hose or a fireman beating down a blazing door. So what if we're drawing a nude man? So what if all we ever draw is a nude man, or the same nude man, over and over in all sorts of provocative positions? Context, not content. Process, not subject. Don't be so ghost, Steve. It's beneath you. A dreadful affair. You wouldn't think that a brick and steel building with a sprinkler system could go up that quickly. Oh, please. Dwayne was glad enough to see the thing go up, and so was McKnight. If you could get into that safe in his wall... <sighs> Forget it. Look, Steve, as far as I know, the fire was an accident. Let's just leave it at that. Now don't you go moving! Some people think all we do is sit around, sketching fetching examples of manhood for our own amusement. Nothing could be further from the truth. Why, just the other day we cited Ted to a crumb for fire code violations. All the dried out paper wasp nests clustered around our wooden house. Why, it's a chem log just waiting for the right faggot. 
believe me. None of us wants to see another fiasco like the Sentinel fire. Bye bye. I don't converse on the job, Steve.